Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is Mary and Gabriel. Dr. Luke begins his gospel by saying that he interviewed many people who were eyewitnesses to the life and sayings of Jesus. After completing his research, Dr. Luke was moved by the Spirit of God to write down what he discovered for everyone to read. He begins his gospel with the story of an old priest by the name of Zechariah who had an encounter with the angel Gabriel in the temple. We learn that he and his wife Elizabeth would conceive a child who would one day announce the arrival of the Savior of the world. After Elizabeth conceived, she secluded herself in their home for the next five months. At the beginning of her sixth month, God dispatched Gabriel with another important message about a child that was to be born. Gabriel was sent to a young girl by the name of Mary who lived in the never-before-mentioned small town of Nazareth about five miles south of the Sea of Galilee. It was an earth-shattering, bewildering message. Gabriel said, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Luke chapter 1, verses 28 through 30. Gabriel continued, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, and he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. Luke chapter 1, verse 31 through 32. Last week we noted that those who believe in the messages of Gabriel will want to pay careful attention to this announcement. It was not Mary, nor the apostles that called Jesus the Son of God. It was Gabriel who arrived with a fresh announcement from the very presence of God who said that the child Mary was to bear must be called Jesus the Son of God. Gabriel continued by saying, The Lord will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Luke chapter 1, verse 32 and 33. Mary was stunned by this announcement. Now Luke has already informed us that Mary was betrothed to a man by the name of Joseph. In those days, there were three stages to a Jewish wedding. First arrangements for the proposed marriage were made between the parents of the couple. Then came an engagement celebration where the couple were officially married. Uh, finally, one year later, following a week-long wedding party, the couple consummated their marriage and began living together. What was so puzzling to Mary was because Gabriel's announcement came between the engagement celebration and the final wedding party. Despite how confusing this all was to Mary, she managed to ask Gabriel the best question she could possibly have asked. Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? Luke chapter 1 and verse 34. Notice that Mary did not ask why or what, but how. And when we were looking for the next move of God, how questions are the best questions to ask. This is because God's ways are higher than our ways and better than our ways. Listen carefully to the answer Gabriel gave to Mary. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Luke chapter 1 and verse 35. The Spirit of God 
would cause Mary to conceive a child without the help of an earthly man. And now for the second time, Gabriel called the child holy and the son of God. Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, cannot lie or deliver a message that is not wholly true. Gabriel goes on to give Mary a sign to confirm the message he is carrying. He tells Mary about the miracle that has taken place for Zechariah and Elizabeth. Gabriel says, Your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, Luke chapter 1 and verse 36. Elizabeth is Mary's mother's sister. This means John and Jesus are second cousins who will be very close in age. They will grow up together, carrying a great spiritual anointing. Gabriel's final word to Mary is one of the keys to understanding the next move of God. Gabriel said, nothing will be impossible with God. Luke chapter 1 and verse 37. Nothing is the combination of two important words. The first word, no, in the original language is u and simply means no. The second word, thing, in the Greek language is rhema. And rhema is a specific word from God for a specific person for a specific task. When Gabriel put these two words together, he is telling us, that when God sends a word or a message to a specific person, the message comes with the power to fulfill itself. It is a self-fulfilling prophecy. There was nothing Mary had to do except to give the Lord permission to move in her life. God invites us to believe that every word he speaks to us has the power to succeed. Ignoring the initial shame it would bring upon her and her family and the man to whom she was betrothed, Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. Luke chapter 1 and verse 38. With those words, Gabriel departed from her presence. What remarkable courage Mary had. Many scholars think she may have been as young as 13 or even 12 years old. The only hope she had was that her parents would believe her story. It is clear they did and quickly arranged for Mary to visit Elizabeth and Zechariah. Mary could not have made the journey from Nazareth to Encarim, the traditional home of Zechariah and Elizabeth, alone. No doubt her father and perhaps her mother made the 90-mile journey along with her. Luke writes, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Luke chapter 1, verse 39 through 40. The next move of God often requires haste. We must act quickly on our new assignment. Last week, we identified Zechariah and Elizabeth as the godly couple chosen by God to birth the next move of God. Their first assignment was to release the signal at the temple that the next move of God had begun. Their second assignment was to receive Mary into their home and protect her for the next three months while the fury of the townspeople of Nazareth could subside. God's move usually connected one generation with the faith of the next generation. It was equally impossible for Elizabeth or Mary to conceive without the hand of God working in their lives. Luke is very aware of this dynamic. And many of his stories connect one generation with the next. In Capernaum, 
he tells of an older lady that Jesus heals before the synagogue official's 12-year-old daughter is raised back to life. Zechariah gives Mary protection as the priest of the extended family, while Elizabeth believed the word that Gabriel gave to Mary. The words of Gabriel were further confirmed the moment Mary and Elizabeth met. When Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 1 and verse 41. Gabriel had announced that John would be filled with the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb. Not only was John filled with the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth was filled as well. Immediately she prophesied, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, and why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Luke chapter 1, verse 42 and 43. Elizabeth was the first person to prophesy that Mary's child was to be the Savior of the world. Before John the Baptist announced Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, while he was still in his mother's womb, he heard his mother make this same announcement, Jesus is Lord and the Savior of the world. Luke confirms this word by recording the testimony of Elizabeth. When the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Luke chapter 1 and verse 44. Finally, Elizabeth says, Blessed is she who believed that there would be the fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Luke chapter 1 and verse 45. There is a great blessing in receiving words from God and believing that they will be fulfilled. Gabriel announced to Zechariah, the word he had spoken to him will be fulfilled in their own time. Gabriel announced to Mary, words from God carry the power to fulfill themselves. And now Elizabeth invites us to believe the words that God gives to us will be fulfilled. When you hear the voice of God speaking to you, arise and say what Mary said, be it done to me according to your word, no matter what the cost may be. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. Before I leave you, let me take a few moments to pray for you. I invite you to believe the words of Gabriel. Jesus was not only conceived by the breath of God, he is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Receive Father's gift of Jesus and the salvation he came to bring to all mankind. At this season, ask Jesus to open your eyes to see who he is and receive him as your savior. I invite you to give God permission to call you to believe something that might embarrass you. And when you hear a word from God, no matter how embarrassing it might be, it will be the truth and at that moment, it's time to move with haste. If you feel the Spirit of God impressing upon you to trust Jesus, do it now. Do it quickly while the Spirit of God is still upon you. Then give God permission to birth something new in your life. Ask God to speak to you, that you'll hear his voice. Write down what you hear and begin to ask God to show you what it means. Ask God to use you to protect and nurture the next thing that he is about to do. Perhaps an older couple is listening and you desire children. I release to you the gift of children. And use, may God use your children to be mighty men and women of God, extending the kingdom of God around the world. You've just heard a rhema word from God. If you just heard God say something to you, Write it down and then write me and let me know what God said to you. Next week, 
we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.